here. And I would like to, at first, be able to recognize some very important people. And the reason for that is because without their work and their leadership, a lot of things wouldn't be done. So first of all, I would like to introduce or recognize the Northwest Division Governor, Ms. Tiffany Salinko. Another great friend and individual that is bouncing all over the district. He has been a past division governor and also a area governor. But most importantly, this year he is the district's retention chair. Iqbal Acha. Yeah. Now moving down the line, we have some area governors for the Northwest Area 2. That would be Mimi <coughs> Shikoski. Mimi. We have some past functionaries right here, but they I think they snuck in. We probably have a past uh, division or district. There you go, the big one. Yeah. else right here, but we do have a previous Area One governor, so past governor. Jennifer McAllister. That's the not Moi. At this time, I would like to call forth our division governor, Ms. Tiffany Salenko, to get this baby rolling. Welcome this evening to the Area 1 Table Topics and International Speech Contest. Are we all excited for a good time? Yes. Yeah. All right. So as German announced to you, I am the current Northwest Division Governor. My name is Tiffany Slinko Howard. And at this time, I would just like to call this contest to order, and let's have a great time. I'm going to bring up Jennifer McAllister. Oh, no. Actually, I am not bringing you up right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you hopped up, and it threw me off. Yes. It threw me off. I'm actually going to bring up your Area 1 Governor, German Zambrano, at this time in order to give you the invocation. We are gathered here for one sole purpose, and that is to compete. And this brings me to something that I came across many years ago. And it was from one of our leaders, yes, this country's president, back in 1910. Over there somewhere in France, Theodore, Theodore Roosevelt had a speech. And in that speech, titled, The Citizenship in a Republic, he spoke about a certain thing called defeat and victory. And hence, since then, it's been known as the man in the arena. So pay attention, competitors and the general public, because you should be able to take root and grow from what I'm about to tell you. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the stronger man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually 
strive to do the deeds. Who knows great enthusiasms, great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who, at best, or at worst, he fails. At least he fails while daring greatly. So, at this place shall never be with those cold, timid souls who neither know victory <clears throat> or defeat. With this, I want you to think. As a competitor, you're here to compete. You will move on. One of you in the table topics will move on. One of you at the international speech will move on. But that challenge, win or lose, you have dared to be up here. You have dared to step up and claim your place within Toastmasters Northwest area. And for those that are sitting and supporting, the call to action is there for you too, so that you may be able to dare and dream and be here. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, German, for that great inspiration to start off our evening. And with that, I would like to bring up our esteemed Toastmaster, who is also a distinguished Toastmaster, Ms. Jennifer McAllister. because I have special members from my club and all the other clubs in our area except for one. But being a past area governor, I am very glad that we are able at least to come together to this extent and to fill the room like we are. I especially like the idea that we are competing because that takes a lot of nerve and courage, but enough of that. We will have two contests. And before we start that, I would like to remind you to turn off your cell phone, throw away the pagers, and any other noisemakers. But as you know, we will have two contests, the Table Topics Contest and the International Speech Contest. The first contest being the Table Topics Contest. And then when that concludes, there will be a 10-minute break. And we can enjoy the treats and socialize a bit. After our 10-minute break, then we will conduct the International Speech Contest. So contestants, timers, <coughs> ballot counters, and sergeant at arms, they have all been briefed prior to the beginning of our contest. Everyone is aware of the Toastmaster International rules that govern these two contest sections. No one should enter or leave this room once the contestants' presentations are started. In fact, in all courtesy, once the contest begins, if you can stay in and wait until we call for break. If you really need to, though, and you need to leave during the minute of silence, then a good fight exit. With that be said, let the contest begin. <laughs> seats a copy of the agenda that has the contestants for the table topics in the international speech contest. So you may use those the agenda to mark the speaking order that I will announce now for the table topics contest. First contestant will be Susan Hesselwander. <coughs> Second contestant will be Seth Colley. Third contestant will be Gina Coates. And the fourth and final contestant will be Paul Lockwood. So that will be Susan, Seth, Gina, and Paul. So we have our sergeant at arms. 
if you will please escort all of the contestants out of the room except for our first contestant, Susan Hathaway.
number two, <coughs> Holly. What is the most important lesson you have learned from being a Toastmaster, and how have you applied that lesson in your life? What is the most important lesson you have learned from being a Toastmaster, and how have you applied that lesson in your life? Seth Collins. The most important lesson I've learned while being a Toastmaster is you need to be flexible. And you also need to practice and prepare. For one of the things that we always hear about Toastmasters is stage time, stage time, stage time. And one of the things I've learned in Toastmasters is you never know what questions are going to get thrown at you. So in this case, what is the most important thing about Toastmasters? It hit on something that I've learned and my home club, we tell all new Toastmasters. As you're preparing for your speeches, table topics will help, but just remember one thing, that every speech you give, you're going to give three speeches. So when you work through your manual, as you go through and prepare, doing project one through 10, or if you're advanced pro projects, you're going to work on a speech at home, and you're going to fill out all of the requirements inside that manual. And then you're going to get in front of the group at a Toastmasters club, and you're going to give that speech. And you're going to sit there and remember everything you practiced, or not. And then you're finally going to give that same speech the third time. And that third time is probably the most important one, because you need to make sure on the way home as you're in the car going, I should have said this, I should have said that, I should have said this, <laughs> you don't wreck the car. <laughs> so remember. Every speech you give at Toastmasters is three times. The one you prepare for, the one you actually give, and the one you should have gave. Madam Toastmaster. One minute being called for our next contestant, Table Topics Contestant 3, Gina Cook. What is the most important lesson you have learned from being a Toastmaster, and how have you applied that lesson in your life? What is the most important lesson you have learned from being a Toastmaster, and how have you applied that lesson in your life? Gina Cook. Chair, fellow Toastmasters and guests. If you don't try, how will you ever know that you can do it? Well, I'll tell you how. You join Toastmasters. When I worked at my corporate location, which was in Barrington, I learned that the club was having its first anniversary of its Toastmasters club. I raced down the hall, I went into that <laughs> meeting, and I joined that day. What an amazing experience. Since that time, five years <coughs> ago, I have done over 50 speeches. I've been able to meet so many Toastmasters, and I've enjoyed crazy, zany escapades of my clubmates. 
Everything from people dressed in robes and slippers at one club <laughs> meeting that was held in a cafe, of all places. I remember helping inspire my club mates to do more by playing the Rocky theme and downing a real egg from a glass. This type of fun and zaniness could only happen in Toastmasters. And how will you ever know unless you actually step outside of your comfort zone, try to do the unexpected, and see what happens? Because I'll tell you right now, do not prop the door open or the alarm will be triggered because I'm headed for the bank safe right now! <laughs> Madam Contest Chair. sometimes. I may do some kind of a physical ailment to differentiate this character from others I play. I was even a serial killer once <laughs> in a play. <laughs> but when I use my sense of humor, <clears throat> when I talk one-on-one -on -one with people, and I truly listen to what they are saying, there's two-way communication going on. I'm listening, they're listening, and that is truly what communication, what good public speaking is all about. If I say something and someone's ears are basically closed because they can't relate to me, There's not communication going on. If, however, I wear my heart on my sleeve and I'm truly honest with my emotions and not putting on that false front, that <coughs> facade, then I can be a good public speaker and an excellent listener.
all violence has been collected. Thank you. At this time, we will hear from our esteemed Area 1 Area Governor, German Zambrano Jr. <coughs> will give us all the exciting details of the upcoming division and district conference. Well, what a contest. I'll try to take as much time as I, they need. But what's coming up on the division? And what else? The district. I mean, you know, there's tax day coming in there somewhere right there, but who's paying attention for that? Because the most important day is April 11th. April 11th is the day that the winners of this contest will need your support. So show up, put it on your calendar. April 11th, what time? The contest starts at 10 in the morning, so therefore doors should open before 9.30 or shortly before that, somewhere on that line. Where? Hoffman Estates. We all know that building, AT&T University. Now, <clears throat> for those that are writing it down, just look in the uh, agenda. It's right there. You know, what day right is there. that, though, Huh? Yeah. What day is that? That is a Saturday. <clears throat> There's also in the back of the room a map and a flyer. <coughs> and it's nice color coded, so you can find it. I know I, I have to look at it a couple of times. I lost myself. In any case, you're not going to be disappointed if you show up because there's a lot of other people going to be there competing and that man in the arena, by the title only, all right, is going to get serious competition, serious competition. Well, what happens to the winners? They move on. When? They move on towards the end of April. Why? Because that's when we have our district Spring Conference. It's a Friday, the 24th of April, and a Saturday, all day long. Yeah. Friday in the afternoon, probably from about 5, 5.30ish on out. Saturday from whew, early in the morning, whew, late at night. Be there or be, okay? Now, <laughs> the winners of the division contest will move on to play with bigger fish and compete on Saturday the 25th. Now, there's more things to do than just to go to a competition and listen to good speakers and learn. You can also learn because there's going to be good speakers. Now, I'm bad with names, and I can tell you a story about it, but here it is. There's this guy that supposedly sings at where, where? That, Wrigley that, that Field, Blackhawks. Black the Blackhawks, I don't know who they are. But, you know, hockey game, I guess it is. Oh, yeah. And there's a big singer, big name recognition, something like that. He's going to be there. I don't know what his name is, so you guys have to find out. He's going to be there. Blackhawk, there. Championship, the championship, together, one day. Woo! Now, before I break, we're going to break for 10 minutes. But there's a little housekeeping. A little housekeeping, that's why there's this note here. We are at a bank, and yes, you're being recorded, all right? But please, do not prop the front door if you need to go out there. The reason being, you prop it, the alarm will trigger, and we will have police officers, Huntley's finest, coming in, <clears throat> guns drawn. Believe you me, you don't want to see those guys, guns drawn, all righty? Now, other than that, thank you. Enjoy the festivities, mingle, and we'll see you in about 10 minutes. Okay.